Oh, hey. Hey, I'm Derek. It's me, Derek, and welcome to Stop Skeletons and Fighting. Uh, you caught me in the middle of some GoldenEye 64. I was just playing it on this monstrosity. That's right. You are not drunk. This is two N64 controllers tying cots together. Yeah, where are my 90s kids at? That one was for you. You thought the N64 controller looked weird with three handles. How about four handles? This is an N64 controller you don't see too often. That's because it is a custom-made piece bought off of Craigslist by one of our patrons who lent it to me. Patreon enabling my compulsive controller habits for over five years. It is the left side of one controller smushed together with the right side of another controller. Uh, getting up close, you can see where it was patched together and they did a pretty good job. But the bigger question is why? How and why would anyone make this? To make couch co-op more intimate? This was for the handful of dual controller N64 games because the N64 did not have two analog sticks, but some games gave you the option to plug in a second controller and pretend you were playing with a PlayStation DualShock. But there are only four, maybe five games that support this at all. This is Punching Weight, where we celebrate the weird, ambitious, and unnecessary, and I'm gonna take you through dual controller N64 games with the help of this Franken controller monstrosity. controller because Frankenstein was the scientist. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> to understand why anyone would even conceive of something like this, you gotta take a look back at the mid-90s. The third dimension was coming in hard. We had games like Doom, Virtual Fighter, Jumping Flash, heck, even things like Toy Story and Donkey Kong Country. No one really knew what they were doing. The playbook for how to make and move a polygon in a third dimensional space hadn't quite been written yet. The N64 controller is a physical representation of what a wild west of a time it was. No one knew that dual analog sticks were the future. No one knew that this, this was the future. Now, I grew up with this controller, but I've seen a lot of confusion about how you're supposed to hold an N64 controller. Like, who's raising you kids? Seriously, if you don't know how to hold this thing, your parents do. I, there are some people watching this video. I'm old enough to be your father. I'm fine with that. The point of the N64 controller was so that it could be all things for all games, literally a stopgap between this and this. All right, all right, sit back and let Uncle Derek set you straight. Holding onto the two outside prongs gives your fingers an all access pass for Super Nintendo style 2D controls while moving one hand to the middle prong puts your thumb right on that analog stick, giving you delicious 3D movement. Or switch it up for left-handers. Or in theory, at least, some games had the option to play like this. We're gonna be talking about one a little later, but most flat out didn't use the D-pad at all. So once again, lefties totally left out in the cold. Honestly, Nintendo was trying to do a lot with the N64 controller. It wasn't the first console analog stick. I mean, technically, analog joysticks go as far back as the Atari, I guess. But there was the Saturn 3D controller that was bundled with Knights and the PlayStation Flight Stick. But this was the first one mass produced in its time. And from this point on, analog became the standard. And if this design honestly still bothers you, there have been third party redesigns for years, even to this day. Beyond being three controllers in one, don't forget Nintendo also went slot crazy, shoving things like the memory pack, the rumble pack, even the transfer pack into this bad boy. Appreciate this controller. Appreciate it. It hurts me a little bit when I see people dunk on this controller. It's like we can acknowledge that it's... Yeah, we can acknowledge... Bad. It's kind of bad. It's, it is kind of bad and weird, <laughs> but that's why it's beautiful. That's why it's beautiful, people. All right? Yeah. <laughs> Overall, the Nintendo 64 was trying to cover all the bases, and it worked pretty well. 2D games like Mischief Makers, Kirby, and Dr. Mario used only the D-pad, but then there were games like Killer Instinct Gold and Mortal Kombat Trilogy that let you use either the D-pad or analog stick. We can all look back in this in hindsight and laugh because Mario 64, the very first N64 game, proved that 3D and the analog stick were going to be an essential part of gaming moving forward. But the N64 controller wasn't as forward-thinking as it could have been. It quickly became apparent that we needed that second analog stick for finer camera control and movement in a 3D space. Games made do, of course. Many games took a cue from Turok and used the yellow C buttons as the second stick. And it works, but like, does it really work? I mean, it, it'll do, but it will really do it. Is it really gonna do it to them? Which meant it was time to get weird. Rare has always been known for innovation, quality, and weirdness, and Goldeneye was them at their peak. Now there's a lot you can say about Goldeneye, but we'll be focusing on the controller options because this game is the first N64 game, if not the first console game period, to have dual analog support. Maybe, I don't know, probably. There might be some weird game on the 3DO, I don't know. 
First one that sold like 9 million copies. I'll put it there. I just want to talk about GoldenEye, two controllers. Leave me alone. Now, I found out about this by accident back in the day. If you plug in a second controller into slot two, you can then pause the game, head to the options, and choose dual controllers. And then look at you, moving and strafing and shooting like a real big boy FPS. The world has been dying for a GoldenEye HD to at least be able to play with modern FPS controls, but dog, it's been there the entire time. Uh, kind of. GoldenEye does bury the lead. It's mentioned briefly in the instruction book as for the true professional, but like, come on, my dumbass wasn't reading no instruction books back then. And also, that's pretty vague. I thought professional was playing on double O agent difficulty. What are you talking about? Also, fun fact, I learned this while we were filming. One of the demos, the title screen shows them going into the options and turning it on. So not only was my dumbass too dumb to read a book, uh, I also was too impatient to sit at the title screen. You thought I was dumb as an adult. Try me in high school. The options only appear when a second controller is inserted, so it's possible you didn't know you could even play this way. But honestly, the default controls on GoldenEye aren't too bad thanks to a generous auto-aim and it being a super polished game. You didn't really need that extra flexibility, but finding this on accident when I was stupid obsessed with this game in ninth grade was like the same feeling of spotting the secret island on the dam or the unused ladder at the beginning of the silo. Ugh, what are the secrets are hiding in this game? You ever notice how this looks like his, his jaw is real big? You ever notice that? There's a secret for you. Too many secrets in this game. Way to go, Goldeneye. I gotta be honest though, I never used the dual analog controls because while Goldeneye did predict the future, it didn't really nail it down. There is no button customization, just four pre-baked options and none plays like you'd expect, or at least not without some further tooling. For example, 2.1. Left analog is forward, backward, turn left and right, and right analog is look up and down, strafe left and right. It's how the standard single controller controls work, and having a second analog stick doesn't really help. Really, you want to go with 2.2. You got look turn on the left and move strafe on the right, which is the opposite of normal controls. Usually move and strafe is on the left analog stick, so swap the controllers in your hands and Eureka modern dual FPS on Goldeneye. No hacks, no cheats, Rare was that close to nailing the future of FPS controls. Which makes this controller amazing. Like it's almost like playing on a modern controller. Or maybe it is, like a gigantic modern controller. Was the Xbox Duke controller not big enough for you? Here you go. I mean, it's just fun to be like playing and then looking down at your hands and seeing, seeing this in your hands. Like, I'm not saying that the secret to happiness is weird custom controllers, but in 2020, I needed all the joy I could get. Now I know people were squirming in their seats when I said that GoldenEye was Rare's peak because hey, what about Perfect Dark? Well, Perfect Dark has the exact same controller options as GoldenEye, so switch to 2.2 and get to it. In fact, as it turns out, this is a better game to play with this mutant due to how the controls are wired on this. You see how there's only one start button? Swapping the first and second ports put the movement on the analog sticks where you'd want it, but it puts the start button on the second port and for some reason, you can only access the menu with the player one start button, which makes no sense. What does it matter which start button I use? Now, thankfully in Perfect Dark, you can just hold A to access your inventory for gadgets. That is not the case for GoldenEye. So with this thing, unless I wanted to be constantly swapping controller ports back and forth, all I could do was just run around and shoot enemies until I died, which is still a lot of fun anyway. I bet whoever made this didn't think there would ever be a need for a second start button. I wonder if this is the reason the controller found its way to Craigslist. But anyway, normal dual controllers work great, and seriously, it's worth it enough to play these two classics again, if only for the novelty of doing it on two controllers. Hey, there are worse reasons to play Goldeneye or Perfect Dark again. But Dual Analog also got some love outside of Rare. There aren't too many others, but Robotron 64, the N64 port to the arcade remake first released on the PlayStation 1, even automatically configures you for Dual Analog play if you have two controllers plugged in at the start. Seriously, two controllers plugged in, just turn it on, hit start, and you are going. And it's still a solid dual joystick shooter, and that dated techno soundtrack, I love it. I'm not sure if this feature was actually advertised though. It wasn't on the back of the box at least. I learned about this thanks to magazine reviews I was reading at the time, uh, one of the few times I was reading back then. It works great with the Franken controller. I, I kind of like it better with this thing. I just feel a little more coordinated when my hands are closer together. But sadly, this game does not have true multiplayer. While there is nothing stopping you from two player, four controller action with Goldeneye and Perfect Dark, Robotron instead makes friends take turns. Of course, this is a misnomer. There are no friends in Robotron 64. 
Our next dual analog game is a technicality, but one I still want to bring up. Sin and Punishment, one of the most legendary import N64 games, was actually developed by Treasure to be played on the left-handed position. Hey, there you go, lefties. But for some reason, when you plug in a second controller, the second slot mirrors the first, but only the analog stick and the B button, meaning you can move your crosshairs and shoot, but nothing else. Now this game had a long development and Treasure was also a super innovative company. It would have made sense for this game to have dual controller support, similarly to how the Wii sequel played on a classic or GameCube controller. What we may be seeing here is unfinished controller support programmed in? I don't know. And it makes me wonder if there aren't other stealth dual controller games on the system. I at least went through all of my other FPSs and nothing else magically started working with the second controller. Maybe this is just a weird edge case or maybe actually there are other games on the system that have stealth dual controller options. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that no one else was dumb enough to try throwing a second controller on with random N64 games. Or maybe they have, and this is just a weird edge case. I don't know. Our final game, legit had dual analog support, but unlike Goldmire Perfect Dark, you won't find this in the manual. Like all the others, it's hidden away, but this time I do literally mean hidden. Star Wars Episode One Racer has dual analog support, however, only with a cheat. While holding Z and by pushing L, spell out RR Duel at the name input screen and the game will control completely different. And don't forget to move it to slot three. For some reason, it doesn't work in slot two. I don't know. Now, instead of simply accelerating the whole rig with a push of a button, each analog stick will control the engine separately. Yes! Cheats were that big of a deal in the 90s that developers would actually hide a whole new mode behind one. I've actually never been the biggest fan of this game, but the dual analog adds a whole new element of play. It's definitely a really unique way of playing a racing game. With all Frankie Weenie here, it's great. In fact, having your hands closer together, I think feels even better. Listen, it's a pretty dumb way to play pod racing, but it is not the dumbest way. I've told you what you can do with dual controllers. What about dual N64 mice? Mises, I got two mice now. Next time we return to the N64 mouse, because I got two of them now, baby! Stay tuned! And a special shout out to our Patreon supporters. Stop Skeletons and Fighting is a Patreon supported show. These two things are both lent to us by our Patreon supporters. Um, by the way, if you were curious, that's what that box of Mario Artist is. We have a lot of plans for 2021. Uh, this is our last video for 2020. It might actually be coming out in 2021, but we're shooting it here in 2020. We're gonna be moving again, so look forward to that. But hey, thank you for uh, giving us something to do this year. Uh, hopefully we've been able to uh, share some some positivity and some good entertainment to you through 2020. And also, I have had a thing to occupy my brain by working on these videos. So uh, I hope you like the videos we've made. We appreciate having an audience uh, to entertain. We have supporters on Patreon. Please uh, support us if you can. But if you can't, just tell your friends about Stop Skeletons and Funny. When they say, what's the best, what's the dumbest YouTube channel out there? Tell them about Uncle Derek and tell them about Stop Skeletons and Fighting. That is going to do it. Happy New Year. I'm ready to start a new year. Hopefully this next one won't be. It can only go uphill from here, right? It can't get worse. Either way, we will be making videos. We're going to get dumb. We are going to get dumber. We are going to get dumber. And we'll see you next year. Take care. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. And stay powerful. <laughs>